SCN Networking Training. Welcome to another episode. In this video, we are going to deal with a concept called static routing. So here we have a network with two routers, our HQ router and then the branch office router, BR1. So in each router has a LAN connected to it. Okay, so let's test connectivity between the PC and then the routers. So note that if I test communication between PC1 and then the HQ router, it should be successful. Likewise, from PC2 to BR1 should also be successful. But the two PCs cannot communicate simply because routing is not in place. So routing is a process by which routers learn and know how to forward a packet to remote networks. So let's test this connectivity. So I'll go to PC1 and ping the IP address of its gateway, which is the IP address of a Q on G1 slash 0, 192.168.1.1. So here you can see that ping is going through since the reply packets are coming. I should also be able to ping from this PC to the IP address assigned to serial 5 slash 0 on the same router. That is 10.0.0.1. So you can see the reply are all coming through. Okay. So if I go to PC2, I should also be able to ping from that PC to its gateway address as well as the IP address on serial 5 slash 1. So let's do that thing 172.16.1.1. So here you can see the replies are coming through. So let's try to ping the IP address on serial 5 slash 1 on BR1. 10.0.0.2 so that is also replying very well so now uh, let's attempt to ping the IP address of PC1 on the other side that's from the BR1 LAN to the LAN in HQ so here you can see we can see we are having an error code destination host is unreachable. Destination host is unreachable simply because the PC2 is connected to BR1, which is its gateway address. So when the packet was sent to BR1 to forward this packet all the way to HQ router and finally to PC1, BR1 was claiming that I have no idea about the destination network 192.168.10. So here, for BR1 to be able to forward the network, it should have an idea on how to read that. And that is normally displayed in the routing table. So let's look at the routing table of BR1. So if I go to BR1, and I issue the IP command, so IP route, we can see the available networks or the networks that the router has an idea about. So in BR1 routing table, we can see that BR1 knows only about 172.16.00 network slash 16 and here it is submitted to slash 24 that's the LAN connected to the BR1 and one of its interface is also assigned an IP address from that network that's why it's given a slash 32 directly connected on G0 slash directly, directly connected on gigabit 1 slash 0 so that is the, the network connected on this gigabit interface on BR1 and also the router knows about 10 network is 10.0.0.0 slash 8 and he's saying is further submitted to a slash 30. So that is the network on the one link. That's the link connecting BR1 to a HQ router. And you can also see out of that network, a single IP is assigned a slash 32 to its serial interface, a serial 5 slash 1. So he's saying to read the network, you have to go out via this interface. So to read the LAN network, you have to go out via this interface, that's G1 slash 0. But the router has no idea about the 192.168 network, which is the LAN on the HQ router. If you look at this routing table, you can see the routing course that tells you what are these letters representing. So for C in the routing table means directly connected routes. So because um, this networks the one link and then the the LAN networks are directly connected to this router that means 
and router has a direct cable connected to those networks so that's why it's seeing them as c routes it's also representing them as l means they are also local to the router so but the router has no idea about it 192.168.1.0 network so in this case you can see that a br1 has one remote network that needs to be LAN, which is 192.168.1.0 in another word the remote network is a network that the router does not have a direct connection to so if you go to a HQ router we will also be able to see that that router also has some information about the routes connected to it but doesn't have information about the remote network which is the 172.16.1.0 in BR1 as well so let's go to HQ So in HQ, I can easily command show IP route to show, to show the routing table. Here you can see the HQ router also only knows about the HQ router also only knows about the 10 network, which is the one link directly connected out serial 0 slash serial 5 slash 0, and it also knows about the LAN network, which is 192.168.1.0. But the HQ router also has no idea about the 172.16 network which is the LAN on the BR1 router so in this case these two routers don't have idea about the remote networks or the LAN networks so this has to be made known to them so we can do this in two forms one way is using static route and the other way is using um, dynamic route so here we are going to focus this static routing okay so now let's try to do the static routing that means we add the route the remote network of br1 to hq also we do the same adding the remote network of the hq to br1 so we go to hq go to global configuration mode simply say ip route the remote network is 172.16.1.0 and the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and then we say the next up IP address so now that's to configure static route we can actually use two methods that's the next hop IP address so that means from HQ the next hop IP address will be the IP address on this interface so now that a hop is FA router so the next router that the packet will hit if it exit this router is this router BR1 and the first IP address will be the IP address on serial 5 slash 1. So we can simply put the IP address here 10.0.0.2 as the next hop IP address. Or if you want, we can choose the upbound interface, the serial 0. Or we can choose the upbound interface, the serial 5 slash 0, the serial 5 slash 0. So this will do the same thing. So so let's use the next hop IP address so that the router does not need to do a recursive route lookup to figure out the next hop IP address if we have to use this CL interface or the outbound interface. Okay, so that's done. That's all we need to do for HQ. And now let's check the routing table again. So note that here we only have in C route and L route. And let's exit one time and display the routing table once more time. So IP route and now you can see an s is added means a static route so if you go here in the course means s means what s means for static so that means there was one router so this means there is one route inside in the routing table and it was done statically so here now the router have an idea about 172.16 network and he said the administrative distance is is one here and the metric is zero and it is going via 10.0.0.2 so that is the IP address of the next hop router okay so let's do the same thing to the branch router we go to BR1 also we add the remote network IP route 192.168.1.0 and the subnet mask is slash 24 the next hop IP address is the IP address of serial 5 slash 0 on HQ, which is 10.0.0.1. And now we can display the routing table, or we use do there in global configuration mode. So IP route, here you can see 
another route also is is inserted in the routing table of br1 with a static code so this was added statically and you can also see the next stop is 10 001 so now this since this router knows about the remote network so let's go and try to ping again from one pc to the other and see what will be the result so we go back to pc pc2 you remember that when we ping initially we are having destination host unreachable so now let's try to recall that command and ping again so some packets were lost first two packets were lost due to app request and now you can see the third and the fourth fifth packets also have successful reply so this means now we can reach the um lands in hq from br1 and also we can trace to see the path that a pc2 will take going all the way to pc1 so use the command trace 192.168.1.10 and now you can see the first hop the pc will go through is its gateway 172.16.1.1 that's the this router on its, this interface g1 slash 0 and the next hop is 10.0.0.1 which is the IP address of the HQ router serial 5 slash 0 and out the out to the LAN interface and here's the PC diary 191.6.1.10 as PC on the LAN okay so that's all for static routing it is very simple to configure and very simple to understand especially for um, entry level technicians you can set up for your network one of its advantages is security because you can be safe from attacks like route injections. But the disadvantage is it has is it has a lot of administrative overhead simply because the more networks you add, the more static route you have to be inserting. So if those networks also goes off, you have to go back to the router again and remove those routes statically or manually yourself. So a, a solution to this will be using dynamic routing protocol and we will see how this works in our future videos. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe and click the like button so that you will not miss our similar videos coming in future.